I just hit 1k. I'm 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 just hit 1k.
homeschool. Wow. Bless you and your children. Right. Yeah. I had to. So I had some, I'll share a little with, I'll share a little bit of my history with you guys today during black history month. So I have two black sons and they were in the mandatory school. You know, you have to send your kids to school in America or else the truancy people come for you and you get letters threatening visits if your kids aren't in a school. So, um, my kid's minding his own business at school. He comes home one day. He has scratches and bite marks on his little person. I'm like, what the hell happened, baby? Oh, well, Wyatt did this to me during PE and nobody did anything to stop it. Okay. So, you know me, mama bear, I call the school. I'm like, what happened to my son that y'all didn't call me, but had the nerve to send him home with obvious assault wounds? Oh, well, Wyatt, he's a troubled little boy. His mom passed recently and he's having emotional problems. And Wyatt was not a black boy. He was a white boy. And so they're making all these excuses for Wyatt's aggressive assaults against my son in particular. For some reason, seeing my son made this little boy upset. And then the excuse they let him have for constantly picking on my kid was, oh, his mom died a few months ago. Never doing anything to correct it, still leaving the boy around my boy and everything. So then my son does something about it. And who was in trouble, y'all? Put a one in the comment if you think my black son was in trouble for defending himself against months long abuse from a white assailant. If you think it was my son that got in trouble, put a one. If you think that it was the little boy Wyatt that finally got in trouble, put a five. I'll wait. Da na 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 da na 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 No takers yet. A one or a five, y'all. A one or a five. What do you think can happen? Dun da 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 da. Well, I'll just go ahead and answer you just simply. Of course. Yes, my son was the one that ended up in trouble after three months of them doing not a thing to Wyatt after multiple interventions, after multiple meetings, after multiple my ass going up to the schools. Nothing was done to Wyatt except for excuses on excuses. And the one time my son did something back three months after continuous attacks, we were in the principal's office talking about your son is suspended. And I'm like, for what? Well, he got into it with Wyatt. I said, oh, the Wyatt that has sent him home with bite marks and bruises ever since three months ago, that Wyatt who you guys haven't done nothing about, that Wyatt. So what's happening to Wyatt? Oh, we can't discuss what happens to the other children. Just, just know that we are dealing with it. Uh-huh. Of course, nothing happened to Wyatt. Wyatt stayed his ass at the school. My son got uh, suspended for two days over that, over him responding to three months of abuse, known abuse at this school at the hands of a white boy. Him reacting and responding to that was their issue. Okay. So that was one thing. Uh, another thing, same school, different day, a black yard teacher decided she was going to drag my son by his backpack to the office. So that wasn't okay. They didn't see anything wrong with it. The lady's not dragging all the kids to the office. She's just treating little black boys like this for whatever reason. So I take myself back up to the school again, y'all. Go up to the school again. And I'm talking to Miss Boyle. I'm like, Miss Boyle, what in the heck is going on up here? That first you got Wyatt putting their hands on my son. And now you have yard teachers, wide linebacker back yard teachers dragging my son by his freaking thing, by his backpack. I want the police called on her. I want to press charges on her. That's assault. She doesn't get to treat anybody's kid like that. So we call the police. Um, the police never showed up while I was there. 
the next day, God said, go to the school right now. I go to the school and there was a police car in front of the school. I'm not thinking anything of it. I get in the office and I see the principal come out of a room when I asked to speak to her, they go get her from this room. She comes out of the room and I'm like, yeah, I'm here to check on my son. Out of the blue, God said, go, I went. She's like, oh, well, wait just a minute. You know, she went back to the room where she had just left to go get my son. And as it turned out, there was a police officer in the room with my then 10 year old son. They did not call me. They did not text me. There was no carrier pigeon on my stoop to let me know that they were allowing the police to question my son without me while on school property during school time. I told you, I happened to show up and now I'm living. I'm like, what the F are you guys doing in here with my son and a police officer? Shouldn't somebody have called me about this? The principal turns to me and says, oh, well, when your son's in school, we're by law his guardian. And so he did have a guardian present and that's us. We don't have to let you know. You guys know full, well, that was the year I decided to, to homeschool. And luckily right after that, the demic happened and we went to distance learning so I could try my hand at it. And then after distance learning, now this is going on my year two of homeschooling because it was crystal clear to me that between the images of blonde haired blue eyed Egyptians being taught as who built the pyramids in the images of the section of Egypt in the school for history, for world history. So whitewashed images, whitewashed history, and then teachers who were in the habit of never protecting black students and then allowing them to be questioned by authorities without me being present. I was all in, I was like, let me take these kids up out of this school. So that's a little story about how Larger Curves came to be the homeschool mom that she is, ensuring that my black minds are fed accurate black information specifically. So yeah, that's my story. It happened, it was horrible. And, but you guys all have the power to do what I did which is take your power back. The minds of our children are very important. That's why they wanna get them and teach them to do nothing except for ingest whitewashed history so that they can become worker bees, sheeple, just mourn for the fodder. If we take our children's minds back, in my opinion, the next generation will be better for it. So I hope people are all doing what they can, but right now we're gonna get at this black history. So, okay, so in part of teaching my kids about, you know, the excellence that is black, I came upon this, everybody has the list about black inventions. Everybody knows so, like peanuts, peanut butter, all that stuff. But I thought it was really interesting and wanted to highlight the number of items that black excellence created that we still use in 2023 in daily life, you guys. It's 2023 and while they're currently trying to take CRT, critical race theory, and they're currently don't wanna feel bad about all this stuff that they, all the atrocities done towards people, specifically black people in America. They don't wanna teach about it because they don't want their kids feeling bad, but it's okay if our kids feel bad about being called slaves and not having any real history to cling on to. And that part's okay. But God forbid one of their grandkids feels bad about what the grandma or grandpa did. Anyway, it's all fake, it's all fake. But what's real is the excellence that is black. So I have this list that we're gonna be going over and the things that are on this list is a hundred things that are currently used today made by black people. Anybody who's here, I would love if you put in the comments um, any of your black excellence moments that I don't get to or that you just want to share with the other curvies in the house. Thank you guys again for coming through on this Saturday. Hope you guys are having a great day. Yes, blame the brown kid. Yes, Wyatt, aka Rose. Yes, Rosemary Spawn. He was the evilest little boy. 
I'm pretty sure he was probably like that before his mom passed and it just exacerbated it. Yes, it was horrible. America has set up a system to target minority children, which leads to the school and prison pipeline. Yes, it's a school to prison pipeline. They even look similar in the interiors and the exteriors. They look exactly alike. Except for one, the people have on uniforms with a gun and one, the teachers have on clothes from Target and tie-dye Crocs. But it's the same system, sinister and evil, yes. Oh, what's good, Sheila? Yes, what's up? What state? California. That's where I am. I'm in California, home of the, yes, anyway. Um, that's completely unacceptable. Do you know who the superintendent? Yes, I talked to everybody. I kicked it all the way up the line. You know I did. If there's one thing y'all don't know about larger curves is I love a good fight. I love a good fight. And I have that thing called, uh, I have last word-itis, where I love to have the last word on top of loving the fight. So I will go on and on and on and on and on. And you know they hate hearing from a black person that likes to talk and is intelligent. Who they can't stand seeing me come to the office. They couldn't stand it. They couldn't stand it. Oh, here she come again. Good for you. Enrollments are down. Yes, in public education. You're right. And it's because of stuff like that. I wish my grandchildren would be homeschooled. Yes, I wish more people would take on the task of forming their own minds of their young kids. I mean, God literally blessed us with the future in the form of children. And then we're going to turn it over to some people that we know don't care about us, that we know have not had our best interest at heart and are currently trying to erase us. Yeah, no, please. Many people as possible. Homeschool, homeschool, homeschool. Yeah, my parents had my siblings and I in private school after horrible experiences in public school. However, private school is very expensive and we were we are fortunate to have scholarships yes exactly like i was lucky enough to go to parochial schools until my high school years um and after yeah so parochial schools did help but even in parochial schools there was a lot of unconscious bias and racism happening you know under the guise of christianity yeah so my son had horrible experiences in private school. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not just because you pay for it doesn't mean it's any less racist or systematically oppressive, you know? Um, hi, Ebony. Thanks for coming through. You guys, Ebony, put the name of your channel up in here, please, in the chat for the people. And then you guys, that's the name of Ebony's channel. You go through and support her. She's on her way to a thousand over there. She has a great POV. So make sure you put that there, Ebony, so the people can find you. Me too. I love a good fight. Oh, yes. My sons are both Aries. Both my sons are Aries, you guys. And they are, yes, yes, very um, bullheaded, stubborn. and But you guys are quite smart, quite smart. Excellent geniuses. I love a good Aries. Um, let's see. Fun facts. I received a Martin Luther King Award graduation. I was completely shocked. This was like years ago, but I still have the award. Congratulations. That's excellent. No way, Ebony. Ebony, you are part of the Curvy Crew. You've been here from day one. Um, like you were here when we were working on stuff. I'm so proud of you that you have your own channel. And Ebony's channel is Show, Style, and Spirit, you guys. Be sure to go over there and smash her buttons, okay? Ring her bell, ring her bell, and click all, and that's the only way you get the notifications, okay? Naughty Love is in the house. You guys be sure to go through and check out Naughty Love. She's a fellow YouTuber in these streets. Go through and smash her buttons too and ring her bells, please, all right? All right, thank you, dear. You didn't have to do that, it means so much. No, no. It's on my heart to do it. Therefore, it must be done. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure. My brothers in Aries. Yes, they can be too much, but I love it. I love a just fight. Yes. Oh, wow. Congratulations. LOL. Ring my... Yes, that's the lick, right? So, okay. So I'm going to split my screen now so that I can pull up some of the things. Because I had a couple of questions on three of the things that we're going to talk about today. 
So as I pull them up, there's the first one is this. Now I'm not sure, insect gun, insect destroyer gun. Let's look at that. Yes, here we are. So did you guys know, this is one of the things we're getting to the, now we're into the black excellence. <clears throat> okay, so we have this screen that we're gonna be sharing. So Albert C. Richardson in 1899 invented the insect destroyer gun. Um, let's see that. Let's look at this image. Oh, and he also invented the casket lowering, um, device that puts caskets in the ground. Oh, Richardson, he did quite a lot. Did you know that black people used to not be able to get patents on stuff? You guys, the patent office was invented, uh, like in 1790, but they wouldn't let black people get patents on their inventions until like 1820s about. So there was a lot of things that were invented that didn't even get patented properly by us. Made by us, for us, by us, okay? Um, here it is, here's the insect destroyer. Wait, that's not it. Sorry, my bad. This thing. So this is some kind of insect destroyer gun. Um, and this was made in 1899 by Albert C. Richardson, who also discovered and made so many things. Um, it looks like he also did the fire extinguisher. Let's see. This dude, Thomas J. Martin, invented the fire extinguisher. Did you guys know that? We use those things today. Right now, today, we're using that. Um, do you guys do you guys like to stay warm in the winter? Huh? Because the gas furnace was invented by none other than Alice H. Parker. Was the black inventor. of the gas furnace, mother of modern heating. Did you know that you guys? So did you, if you guys like to be hot, hot, hot in your house, then this HVAC pioneer, Alice Parker, who got this patented in 1919, you guys. Shout out to Alice. Because it's freezing in California today. It's 43 degrees where I am. And as you may or may not know, there's snow on the Hollywood sign in LA. There's snow in the mountains of Santa Cruz Beach of uh, foothills. Um, there was snow in Oakland yesterday, Skyline Hills. And that's rare. I mean, like full big on chunks of snow was falling. And so to all the people who are currently staying warm in their houses, in this 43 degree weather, we need to give a shout out to the excellence that is Alice Parker for her invention of the gas furnace, you guys. Now, when you guys go to the elevator buildings or you live in apartments, did, oh, she did that. Yeah, I said in 1919. Do you know people used to have to take stairs all the way up to the top? But <clears throat> the elevator, Yep, the good old elevator that we use in 2023. Alexander Miles is the inventor of none other than the elevator, y'all. So every time you guys don't have to take the stairs when you're not trying to get your steps in, you can thank Alexander Miles, who invented the elevator and got it patented in 1867 for that. Hello? I know I my ass is thankful for that because I prefer <clears throat> the elevator on occasion. Thank you, Mr. Miles. 
Okay, let's keep on moving around. Now this one, you know that clock they call Big Ben? You know who that was um, named after? I do. You know who Benjamin Banneker is? He is one of the inventors of so many things, a fabulous mathematician. Not only did he do the clock, not only did he create the almanac, but a lot of the secret places in and around um, Washington, D.C. were made by him. He was a fantastic inventor. Um, he invented the almanac in 1791. Now, if you don't know, the almanac is a very important book to find out what's going to happen in the future based off of past stuff. So he was able to plot that. He also, let's go back one. He was um, an inventor of so many more things. Let's see. Benjamin Banneker. But the almanac is what we were going to talk about today. Because I think it's um, really incredible all the things that Benjamin Banneker invented. Let's see. Inventions. The wooden clock, the clock, the almanac. Look at that. Like, you guys, you guys. We use clocks today in 2023. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Big Ben. Now, whose street likes to be clean? Huh? Because the street sweeper that goes down my street once a week. Hey, son. Was invented by none other than Charles Brooks. Yep, the street sweeper was invented by Charles Brooks in 1890 to help keep the streets of America clean, you guys. In 1890, he invented this and it's still being used today. Give it up to the black excellence that is Charles Brooks. Now, Charles Drew invented what's very important and what is his last name drew charles drew in 1945 invented the blood plasma bag okay this is a life-saving instrument used to this day in 2023 yes give it up to charles drew the last time you went and had an iv thank you charles the last time you had to get some blood during your surgery thank you charles this is black excellence charles drew ladies and gentlemen you guys like driving around in your cars i love driving around in my car and when you know when you sound like you have bricks in your engine, it's because your spark plug is bad. Well, Edmund Berger invented the spark plug that's in your car that helps your car run more smoothly. Hello. He was an elementary particle theorist and he earned his undergraduate degree in physics from MIT in 1961 with the Princeton PhD in 1965. Hello? And he created for us the spark plug, y'all. Have you ever changed your spark plugs? Well, you can because of Edmund Berger. Okay? In 2023, we can do that because what Edmund Berger did in 1839? What you say? Now... <laughs> Uh, Elijah McCoy 
did this thing called a lubricating cup. And I'm not real sure what the lubricating cup does except for lubricate stuff, but it's an invention. It's an invention that was invented by Elijah McCoy, black inventor behind. And he's, he's the, he's the person, you know, that thing called the real McCoy. You've heard of that thing, the real McCoy, because of Elijah McCoy, the real McCoy. Okay. The real McCoy is Elijah McCoy. The lubricating cup. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it did, but it was a major invention, not known to the public. Um, the lubricating cup. You tube the oil cup, so it's automatic it, to keep the engine oil. It must be lubricated all over the engine to avoid constant breakdowns. So Elijah McCoy invented the lubricating cup. Isn't that amazing? I like driving my car. I don't want it to stall out. Thanks, Elijah. Now, let's keep on going with the black excellence. Okay, I know that some, okay, what's one of the favorite things you guys, what you say, right? <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, I love a good keychain. I know on my keychain, one of my car starters gave out because I, I was one of those people that had 25, 11 things on my keychain and it ended up uh, wearing on the starter. So that's a note to self and a note to my curvies. Don't have a lot of things on your keychain that you use on your actual car because you can wear out your starter by having too much weight on that area. But the person that invented the keychain, did you know that was a black person named Frederick? Frederick Loudon? Oh, wait. No way. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I love you. You guys, shout out to Make It Make Sense. I need you to go over to Make It Make Sense if you haven't already. If you don't know, now you know. Make It Make Sense is a fabulous creator in these YouTube streets, and he actually helped me get to the thousand on Sunday. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in the house and playing with us today on our Black History Month. Remembering time to celebrate. Thank you for the super chat. Right on. That's right, Mims. Thank you so much. Okay, so I was on the keychain. Keychain. Thought I was typing over here. And of course she wasn't. I was typing something, but it wasn't over here. So the keychain is Frederick. Loudon. Let's take a look at the inventor, Frederick Loudon. Oh, good old Frederick. Look at this handlebar mustache Frederick was working with. Because he decided that we was going to need something for our keychains. And so Frederick Loudon, the Frederick Loudon, he created a good keychain for us. Um, teacher, spiritual, singer, and choir director. It doesn't really say anything about, oh, he's from Ohio, Methodist. Business ventures, uh, manufacturing company, Ohio, grade 70, revolutionary, making 300 shoes a day. The Loop, the Loudon brand shoe he also made. Anyway, oh boy, it's responsible for the keychain. So every time you use your key that's on a keychain, you can thank Frederick Loudon. Because this is black excellence, ladies and gentlemen. And it's Frederick Loudon. Then we got, oh my God. So I'm sure if you're a curvy, you know mama runs hot. Mama runs hot. So what do I love? I love what Frederick Jones. Jonas, who invented the air conditioner. Yes, Frederick Jones. 
who invented the air conditioner. Here we go. He invented the air conditioning unit in 1949, y'all. 1949. This is black excellence because we use this today in 2023. And we're going to be using it this summer when we have record heats the same way we're having record cold. Thank you, Frederick. While we're on you, Frederick, you did the air conditioner, but the only reason I can tell it to get hot or cold is because you also invented the thermostat control. Thank you, Frederick, for the thermostat control, for letting me regulate how hot or cold I need something in my house. Now, um, this is a lot. I'm not real sure exactly how this thermostat control translates, but I know it helps keep mama cool. So thank you for the excellence. That is Frederick Jones. Moving right along, <coughs> we have none other than what we all practically needed <coughs> during the demic, which is the gas mask. Did you know that Garrett Morgan invented the gas mask, y'all? Did you know that a black man who is Garrett Morgan in 1914 invented the gas mask? Well, now you do. Now you do. Garrett Morgan also invented the traffic light and the sewing machine, y'all. Hello? Hello? So all the fashions that we get on Project Runway are thanks to the sewing machine of Garrett Morgan. All the gas we don't have to smell when we're walking around this world is because of Garrett Morgan's gas mask. And all the accidents stopped on the streets of the entire globe that are regulated and measured by traffic light. We get to thank none other than Garrett Morgan, who is black excellence for these three top notch inventions. Y'all give it up for Garrett Morgan. This is black excellence. Everything this man invented in the 1900s, in the early 1900s, when he couldn't even freaking vote, you guys. You know black people didn't get to start voting till 1965. Y'all know that, right? And it wasn't until 1965 that black people were even seen as an almost whole citizen with the right to vote. Hello? 1965, we're in 2023. Y'all know that wasn't a long time ago. I was born in 1969, four years before I got to this earth. My people who invented this world practically and foundationally built this country were not recognized as citizens within its borders until 1965. You guys, but everything we invented before that and after that that is still being used today needs to be respected and remembered. Do you guys think so? I think so. I know so. You guys better get to respecting, telling the word, spread the word around. You might think, oh, I already knew these people so far that Larger Curves is talking about today, but you might not. Maybe your best friend doesn't. Maybe their kid doesn't. Maybe their little cousin doesn't. And these things need to be remembered so that we can get the respect that is due us so that we can be included in society in a most admirable way because we deserve it. We are worthy. We are excellence. We are ingenuity. We are enterprise. We are inventors of greatness. Remember it, remember it. The sewing machine, the gas mask, the traffic signal. Thank you, Garrett Morgan. Thank you. Well, in 1899, I guess fishing was something else because George Cook, George Cook, inventor, he invented this fishing device. 
So George Cook, he invented the auto fishing device. Oh, I said finching. So let's see. Here we go. Automatic fishing device. Now I'm not sure what exactly it does, but you know, you keep what you kill and a closed mouth don't get fed. So I bet this was very important during that time. American inventor. Yeah, this is him. George Hamill Cook. Now he doesn't look very uh, African American, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I know he's on my list as a black man that created the black, see it's right here. Black inventor, George Cook invented this. But this picture, I'm not sure who this picture is of you guys. We're gonna keep it moving on. Shout out to all the fishers the fishermen around the world who get to use this auto fishing device that was created in 1899, y'all. 1899. He created this fishing device. Now, we're going to keep it up with the Georges because um, George Grant, golf tee, he invented the golf tee, y'all. I, I When I take my kids to the Scandia around here, that's a miniature golf thing. And when we go to Top Golf for my son's birthday, we will be using a golf tee that was made by George Grant in 1899. 1899-2023. We're still using what the wonderful mind that is George Grant created. Okay. So all the people, they wouldn't have been able to serve fried chicken and watermelon at that master's dinner without the golf tee from George Grant. You, Oh my gosh. Give it up to George Grant. We're going to keep it moving on. And with the Georges, a lot of Georges. There was George Samson. And George Samson knows that mama didn't want to hang her clothes outside anymore because what if it rains for 40 days and 40 nights? Can your clothes get spring fresh on the line if there's freaking a storm in your neck of the woods? No. So you know what George did? You know what George Samson did, Curvy's? He invented the clothes dryer for us. Shout out to George Sampson for the clothes dryer that we use in 2023 that he created in 1971. Meet George T. Sampson, black man who invented America's first automatic clothes dryer. Can we get a shout out to the excellence that is George T. Sampson? You guys, did you even know that literally so far, everything that I went over on this list, we currently use today. But they're trying to write us out of books, y'all. Everything that we've gone over on the list has enhanced the lives of Americans and the people around the entire globe. Whether you're a flat earther or a glober, you have been helped by the inventions and ingenuities of the black mind and excellence of the list that we're going over so far today. Give respect where respect is due. Yes, George T. Sampson looking like granddaddy. Go ahead, George. We're gonna keep the list moving on with another George. And you know, one of the reasons I didn't like that damn movie, You People, was because um, that Jonah guy, he said some, he said in the movie, he said, oh yeah, Jewish people invented peanut butter. You guys, put in the chat who invented peanut butter. Who invented peanut butter, you guys? 
Now, I don't know if he identified as a Jew or if his religion was a Jew, but Jonah in the movie, You People, said and did not get corrected that Jewish people invented peanut butter, which is not true. Because George Carver, George Carver, this black man, George Carver, George Carver, the black man, George Carver, right here, George Carver, he the one that invented peanut butter, y'all, and many other things. Okay, it didn't stop with peanut butter. From what I understand, he made a lot of different things. Okay, and peanut butter was one of them. George Washington Carver is best known for the inventor of peanut butter, but what people may not realize is he contributed to science in other ways too. He was born in 1860 in Diamond Grove, Missouri, while Carver was teaching at Tuskegee Institute, he began experimenting with peanuts and found that many things could be made from them. He created other ways to help farmers and was called in during World War I to show ways to use sweet potato flour as a substitute for wheat. You guys, can we give it up to the black excellence that is George W. Carver, 1896, invented the peanut butter. Now we're gonna get out of the Georgias and go over to Granville. Granville Woods. You guys know who he is? Maybe not, but you should because uh, you know he invented some things. Let's see, invented the telegraph, the incubator. He's done a lot. Let's see. Okay, so Granville Woods. He invented, let me see, Granville, Granville, where are you on my list? Though so I have him down in 1839 for the auto cutoff switch. 1839 for the auto cutoff switch. Let's take a look at what that does. Auto cut off switch. And because I'm not really sure what it does. Yeah, I'm not really sure what it does showing results for. Yes. But it's some kind of cutoff switch. Brownville T. Woods. The Black Edison is what this article says. Um, and that's too weird to read. Let's make it down. Exceptionally talented Black inventor. Granville Woods. He was always specializing in creating new ways to use electricity, his inventions related to the railroad, but he also had solutions on how to dim theater lighting, how to build an egg incubator, how to create a better boiler for steam engines. He patented more than 50 inventions, selling the rights to many of them so that he could afford to remain self-employed and continue to invent things. The Bell Telephone, Westinghouse, Thomas Edison were among those who purchased rights to his inventions and patents, you guys. He was the Black Edison because he was the inventor of what Edison got to take credit for. Hello? Hello? So he did, um, he made the railroads improvement. So if you take Amtrak, thank him. He was able to, there was a Wood Falls, most inventors, certain things, Woods and Electrics, the air brake, you guys. He created the air brake, 1869, the third rail. Oh my gosh, I'm finding this out right here. I only had him on my list for the freaking auto cutoff switch and phone transmitter. I'm finding out with you, Curvies that he also invented that third rail thing for the subway so that electric power could occur with con without continuous contact between the power source, you guys. Dude. And then of course, Edison got at him and it looks like he had to fight Edison or whatever, but give it up for the excellence. That is Granville T. Woods. Okay. We're gonna keep moving on, Curvies. So much black excellence to discover and go over. We're gonna 
Now, when I was a little girl, I used to love not only going school shopping every year, but also picking out my lunchbox every year. Did you guys used to do that? Did you guys used to pick out your lunchboxes every year? Remember back in the day, you went school supply shopping, school clothes shopping, and part of supplies was your backpack and your lunchbox. Remember? Well, thank you, Mr. James Robinson, for inventing the lunchbox. Thank you, James, because I used to get the cutest little lunchboxes that never would have got, I, used, I had this one. I had a freaking Curious George lunchbox. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Remember? Hey, who's old? Who's this old? Who's this old? I used to have lunchboxes like this, you guys. And you have them with the little thermos in there too. And your parents could put the hot soup in there on a cold day for you. Remember lunchboxes? Oh, remember they got snazzy when they started getting plastic and they had the... Remember? Oh my gosh, such fond memories and only possible in 2023 because of James Robinson in 1887 invented what is the lunch pail. We're going to keep it moving on. Now this was on my list to look up because I have no idea what a shoe lasting machine is, but if we invented it in 1883, Jan Metzler, Matt Zegler, is it Zeg? No, Zilger. Now, so Jan Metzlanger invented this shoe lasting machine. Now, I'm not real sure what the shoe lasting machine does, but it's very important in shoe manufacturing. Let's go over here. So this is Jan Ernest, Ernst Matt Zilger, shoe lasting machine. He invented the automatic shoe lasting machine, mechanizing the complex process of joining a sole, a show, uh, of joining a shoe sole to its upper and revolutionize, revolutionizing the shoe industry. So the only way Louboutin is able to get his soul to his upper is because of what Jan did with the lasting machine. <coughs> it is a revolutionary machine that to this day is being used. And he created this in 1883, you guys. Isn't that excellent? Shout out to Jan. Thank you, because mama loves a good pair of shoes. Okay. Now we're gonna keep moving on because everybody loves a pretty lawn. But here in California, you'll get a fine. You'll get fined if you uh, water it during um, the, what's it called? Smith during the um what's it called they say that we have a drought even though we just had an atmospheric river so we're gonna go over here to the lawn sprinkler who was invented by none other than this handsome gentleman John Smith invented the lawn sprinkler his invention revolutionized the way that crops were irrigated and cared for we did it they hit it 1897, he invented this, revolutionized the farming industry, revolutionized the way that Americans are able to get the food on the table. Shout out to anybody that likes to eat for the invention from John Smith, that is the lawn sprinkler. I mentioned I homeschool my kids and they love taking a break just like they're in regular school to um, sharpen their pencils. Well, John Love is the inventor of the pencil sharpener that we use today, you guys, in 20, 
23. Anybody that sharpens a pencil can thank John Love, this black man right here, for inventing that. All right? Hello? Hello? It looks like somebody else did something else. Who's this dude? Yep, the portable pencil sharpener was invented by him. You guys. John Lee Love. Look at that. He was from um, Fall River, Massachusetts. He made a plaster hawk. I'm not sure what the plaster hawk is. Let's go back one. Because I saw that come up. What's plaster hawk? Oh, is that what this is? Is this thing called the plaster hawk, that thing? Yep, so this was invented by him, but what's the plaster hawk? That's what we gotta find out. I'll find out, we'll do another one. We're gonna keep it moving on this Black Excellence special. Let's keep it moving. No, well, you know what? It's time for me to go to these comments real quick. <clears throat> See what the people are saying in these YouTube streets. No way! I missed the thing I'm a Bob from you, Natasha. I love you too. I love you too, my level eight sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the last one I saw was make it make sense. Me too. I was just on my way to make it make sense channel to vote yes on the upcoming live. They voted yes, Mims. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Love you back. Garrett Morgan invented the stoplight too. Yes. Come on, history. Yes, he invented the stoplight. Smart man. I remember learning about him during Black History Month for years. Yeah. But, um, and have you also noticed how Black Mystery Month has been diminished over the years? Now, I don't remember all these award shows coming on during Black History Month when I was a little girl. I remember a lot of like extra specials on TV and extra commercials that highlighted Black history. Not this full on every award show that can possibly be fitted in with no mention of Black history. And then uh, freaking Harry Styles winning Hip Hop of the Year, whatever, what freaking ever, whatever. No, John Harlow getting rap album of the year during Black History Month. Hi, they so funny. They be trying to get my goat. It works half the time too. There's an elementary school in the neighborhood named Garrett Morgan. Oh, awesome. That's insane. Yes, the Civil Rights Act wasn't put into place till eight, 1964. That is not a long time ago, you guys. I was born in 1969. That was, This happened five years before I got here. Before I got to this plane this time. <laughs> yes, America ka ka. It's sad how America ka ka has hidden these things. They want people, the world to think that black people didn't do anything. Yeah, there was this, um, hey, all the countries that are recognized as European countries did have a huge symposium back in the day and decide to leave out Africa and to change the, 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 topic the they led the conversation as it were on how people should think about the mother continent and their dwellers yes talk about it we even built the white house that yes yes we built the white house built it a lot of older politicians still low-key have those racist values still not even low-key outright they outright have these values and there's a renewed conviction in the racist values that the colonizers possess. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Now, Moselle says, even the White House. Yeah, that's why we need to demand reparations now. That's what I'm saying. And we need to demand it. There's no reason. I'm not even being divisive. I'm speaking a fact. There's no reason that any other people group should have gotten even a hint of reparations prior to black people in 2021. The anti-Asian hate crime bill allowed for a form of reparations to be paid to Asian Americans. And they haven't even been through or done 
what we have done in this country. But they got earmarked, I think it's over $300 billion or something. And it's a form of reparations because they're paying to repair and make whole a part of society. But they're still talking, they're still having meetings about what we get. They're still deciding who qualifies as black. They treat us all like black, but they're still deciding who qualifies as black. Well, who exactly should get them? I know there's still a lot of Negroes left in America, but who exactly should get the reparations? I mean, you know, uh, anyway, we need to demand it. Mama Kerr says, just saying everything that is, was imagined and invented by someone or a group. Yes. Miss Bud Bud, hello. Thanks for coming through. No worries. No worries. I appreciate that. You're welcome for the content. Hello. Hello. Miscegenation. Right back at you. Hello. Hello. Waving. Hello. Hi, Be More. Uh, I'm actually chilling in the Baltimore train station waiting on my hometown friend to pick me up. No way, Natash. That is hilarious. <laughs> um, the politicians assume that our history is just slavery and Jim Crow laws. They obviously don't know that we're inventors as well. No, they know it. And they love to keep it under wraps because then we'll be looking at them like, well, what did you do? That you get to make all the laws. What did you contribute? That you get to do all the stuff that you're doing to us. So they know, and that's part of why they force the just slave mentality upon us. It's a whole trade-off. I mean, our slavery in exchange for our excellence makes them appear excellent. Hey, it's just a thought. Yes, Mr. Carver, such a proud nerd. Yes, yes, sweet potatoes, smart man. That's dope, yes. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Love. This is such an important topic. I love it. Thank you, Ebony. Right, largest shout out to teachers because that's a tough job, but teachers taught the same black history figures year after year. Yeah, you have to take African-American history class at a university level to even learn beyond Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and whatever else they'll allow us to learn on a juvenile level, right? Yep, it's either they're, um, yes, they're back to avert racism, no long, longer convert, covert. I'm not real sure. They're back to overt race. Yes, exactly. They're back to overt racism. It's no longer covert. I know it's practically like the entire United States is becoming the South at this point with the amount of up in your face. You know, I'm a racist because I'm going to treat you like this, boy. You know, like it's like bizarre. You used to have like certain regions of America where you felt like that might not be happening here, but everywhere from the farmers in Montana in 2023 being terrorized by white racists in their community because they own land, because they did what white people always tell them to do. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps, boy. Go make something on this world. I mean, we did it. And so there's black farmers that went and bought acreage in um, Montana, as is a right as an American to purchase land. And his neighbors are terrorizing him. It's domestic terrorism happening upon him. And um, when he reported it to the authorities in Montana, the sheriff arrested him for complaining about being terrorized by the KKK. You guys, in 2023, this is happening. And you can Google it right now. Black farmers, Montana, terrorized. Google it, you'll see. Happening right this week. The man just had to go and try to, he had to post bail this week because the sheriff in Montana was allowed to arrest him for complaining about being terrorized by the KKK. My Little Pony was everything. Yes, larger is scary how it looks like we're going back. Yeah, it's we're back. We're back and they're in our face with it. It doesn't matter the state. 
It's literally evil. Yep, literally evil. A small tidbit of history in Winston, Salem, North Carolina, Safe Bus Company was established by Ralph Morgan. My godmother's adopted father? No way. That is excellence. That is black excellence. Ralph Morgan. Yep, and here we go. Safe bus. Here we go. Bam. Bam. Black excellence. Shout out to the black excellence that is Mr. Ralph Morgan. A, a Curvy's bloodline is in this black excellence that we're going over today. I have been on many a buses. I've ran for many a buses. So shout out to Ralph Morgan for making it better for us. I appreciate that tidbit. That's amazing. That They just want to take the land. They don't want black people to have anything. They know Montana is prime land. Yeah, um, that part. They, and then that's the other thing. Can we talk about digress for just a second before we get back to our black excellence? The nerve, the audacity of white racist America to tell black America to go build something, do something for yourselves, do it. And then every time we do, they bomb it, they flood it, they kill it, they destroy it, they poison it. They set it on fire, they they are it, they abuse it. Like think of all the negative words you can think of and then insert that word in front of what they do to black people and black communities. Central Park used to be a thriving black community. After they burnt it, they made it a park. Lake Garner used to be a thriving black community. After they burnt it, they flooded it and made it a lake for their use. Oklahoma Wall Street, thriving black community. Black Wall Street bombed by the US government, used bombs on American soil and blew it the F up instead of have some black people be excellent in this country and live the American dream. Time and time again, black excellence has remained excellent and contributed in a positive way to society, played by the rules that society puts upon their citizens. And instead of be rewarded for it, they're bombed, you guys, literally bombed. So before you think the next time about telling a black person to go do anything, can you tell the white people not to bomb it first? It's just a thought. Y'all are going to have to talk to each other. The way we need to talk to each other, if you're a non-Black person and you're an ally to the Black community, then you'll take it upon yourself to educate your fellow man that looks like you, your fellow woman that looks like you, and make sure that they're respecting the excellence that is Black because it's not gonna get better if we're the only ones fighting for it. Just like Muhammad Ali said, if there's a thousand poisonous snakes coming to get you in a room, are you gonna open the door for the one that says I'm not poisonous? Are you gonna open the door for the one that says I'm not here to kill you? Nope, not till that one turns around to the other 999 of those poisonous snakes and says stop and demands that they stop. That's what it's gonna take. We can only do so much marching, y'all. The laws have to be rewritten. The systems have to be replaced in order for it to really change. Because at this point, the next black town that comes up, the next black Wall Street that comes up, there'll be a bomb on the way. And that's just based off of historical empirical facts. So there's a lot of things that need to happen to ensure 
that the black excellence that is us continues to be us and exist in this world. Okay, back on the train. You know, there are current president mentored by a former ground wizard. Yeah, it's all effed up. <clears throat> um, he started a jitney service in North Carolina. Cool. It's happening in Colorado too. The black couple that owns several acres. Yep. Being meddled with. They can't leave us alone. Just like when you have you seen the TikToks, you guys, of oh, I'm just trying to enjoy myself, and there'll be a black girl doing something or a black guy doing something. And the people around them who are not black, just all in their business, like watching them, it's just insane, insane. They're obsessed with us. Why are you so obsessed with me? Yes, they just, anything we do, they're watching, they're looking, they're questioning. It's amazing. It's amazing. How about you just try loving? Don't watch and stare in awe, just love and accept. Don't tolerate me, love me. That's the only way I'll be able to have something for my kids and my kids' kids without it getting the blown the F up. Yeah, I have to yet to view and visit the museum, but will soon. Um, it's scary how humans can even have that mentality. Right, Larger? They flooded the town. Yes, Lake Lanier. Yes, the government claimed they had to do it. The government is always all in on destroying us. They know they owe us reparations and they're trying to get the number down by committing genocide on us continuously. State sanctioned genocide. State sanctioned genocide. The entire town in Oklahoma was wiped out except for like four people. And those people are still su suing today and not getting their stuff back. But other races got their stuff back but we still got we still got to fight. They're just waiting for us to die off so we can stop asking about it. They're obsessed with how they can keep us down. Yes, it's a literal, like their life depends on it. Yep, snatching them up. Right? Yeah. So okay, let's continue with our list. We have a couple more. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, you guys, my East Coast brethren, did you know that you have Joseph? Joseph. What's his name? Joseph Winters. The fire escape. So this dude right here. Oh, I love his Frederick Douglass Afro. That's beautiful, isn't it? So he invented the fire escape ladder, you guys. He invented the fire escape ladder so that people could escape out of the fires that the people set on black towns. They would have a way to get out of the window when the people come to set it on fire. But I wonder how many black houses got it used on them. That's a whole other special. We're just here to talk about the excellence that is Joseph Winters for inventing the freaking fire escape ladder. Now, have you guys had company that wouldn't leave or would leave? I know over the holidays we had company and um, Leonard, what's his name? Leonard Bailey. I wonder if he's related to Cynthia Bailey. Uh, he invented the folding bed. Did you know that? Oh, Leona Bailey. No, it's Leonard Bailey. Here he is, bam. Leonard C. Bailey. He invented what everybody has for their guests in 2023, that folding bed that you have out in the garage, that you have over, uh, that you ordered off of Amazon over the holidays. It's all thanks to this, they call him a Negro here, uh, inventor. And actually they used the cot that he invented specifically in the wars. So, the whole army gets to thank this black man for inventing the folding beds that they use in eight and 19. I'm sorry. They use them now in 2023 and he invented it in 1899. You guys shout out to Leonard Bailey. Now let's keep going. Ooh, did you guys even know that when you were little kids, 
you had Matthew Cherry to thank for inventing the tricycle. Did you guys know that? Yep, Matthew Cherry invented the tricycle. And now they come huge. They're, adults use tricycles a lot these days. Um, so shout out to the black excellence that is Matthew Cherry. And he invented this tricycle in 1886, you guys. Keep it going with black excellence. Now we have Michael Harvey. And I was trying to choose more obscure inventors that you may or may not know. So that's why this list is so like all over the place. Um, but we have Michael Harvey and the Lantern. Yep. So anytime you go camping, this fine man right here, Michael Harvey invented the lantern. I know that when I go camping, we love a good lantern when we have to go cop a squat in the woods. So shout out to the black excellence for lighting the way, literally, Michael Harvey. We're going to keep it moving on. Um, now this Osborne Dorsey guy, anybody know what Osborne did? Huh? We're about to show you. Fine looking young man. Well, did you, how'd you guys get into the door that you guys uh, walked into today? Maybe by this doorknob right here? Well, shout out to Osborne Dorsey for inventing it for us. So that when you enter a room or exit the room with a handle, a doorknob, it's thanks to this man right here. You guys, not only did he invent the doorknob, but he was like, after you open the door, you might need to stop it. So he invented the door stop also. Hello? Hello? We're going to keep it moving on. I know everybody likes receiving something to on the 1st or the 15th. Oh, and he did these inventions about the doorknob and the door stop in 1878, y'all. It's 2023. We're still using everything that Osborne Dorsey invented. His excellence is still applicable today in 2023. Yes, shout out. Yes, the tricycle, yes. What are you saying about Tuskegee? Just like the government did to Tuskegee Airmen, injected syphilis into them. They did, it's disgusting. And then they hardly apologize. Oh, and then what about the thing where they put the radiation in the babies and, that, and the black men are walking around with half a head because they put the radiation on them. Government sanctioned experiments on black people. We're humans, you guys. Stop dehumanizing black people. Is That's what allows all of the treachery to happen is the dehumanization of us. So we're human. You have to be a human to invent this stuff. You have to have a human, you have to have a mind which qualifies you as human, a free thinker, in order to create all of these wonderful things from centuries past that are still usable today. You have to have had a fantastic, genius human mind. Don't dehumanize black people. Stop it. Stop it. But I was on Paul Dowling. Paul Dowling, rather. What's going on? P A U L D O W L I N G. Paul Dowling. Where'd he go? Did you guys know that the mailbox was invented by Paul Dowling? Oh, Philip, I have him as Paul. Yeah, I have Paul L. Dowling. And they have Philip B. Interesting. Interesting. I'm 
Okay, well, he's still black and he invented it. The, they, they got the last name right. Dowling. That's taking too long to open. When things take too long to open, I go back. I go back. But let's see what else he is. So they're calling him Philip Downing. He invented um, in their homes, door design, Zion Church. But he invented the mailbox. Here it is, this one. So the only reason the post office has something to put the mail in is because of Dowling. Downing, because he invented the mailbox in 1891. I don't know about you, but I still get my mail in a mailbox in 2023. Shout out to the excellence that is Mr. Downing. Well, there's Philip or Paul. I don't know why they would have had that different name. Now we're going to keep it moving. <clears throat> Did you know that Larger Curves used to take flamenco dancing? And I fancy myself a dancer in my heyday. And I promised myself I'd get back to it. But the guitar, the guitar, y'all. Yep, the guitar that people use. The guitar. You guys love a good guitar? I love a good guitar. Well, the guitar was made by Robert Fleming and patented in 1886 as the creator of the guitar. Did you guys know that? Yeah, I love flamenco too. So that's who did it, was Robert Fleming Jr. Did you guys know that? Yeah, I love salsa dancing, hula dancing, belly dancing. Flamenco dancing, African jazz. I tapped. I did ballet, traditional ballet, plié, ground plié, all over the place. My mom used to go take me to all the movement classes. Jazz. Yes, I used to love it. I had so many leg warmers and shoes. Yes, yes. So anyway, the black excellence that is Robert Fleming makes it possible for the flamencos to play the guitar went on flamenco dancing. He did that in 1886, you guys. We're gonna keep it moving a couple more. We're almost done. Now I know everybody likes to look sharp. For real, for real. We're gonna go to Sarah Boone, the inventor. Look at this cute little lady right here. You know what she invented? She invented the ironing board. Here it is. Looks like she invented a couple other things too we'll look at. But she invented the ironing board in the early 1800s. <clears throat> it looked like this. And in 1892, she created it to look like this. And to this day, I know that I use the ironing board every time I wanna look extra sharp and have my creases on point. So we get to thank her that we don't have to do it on the floor and we don't have to do it on this weird little early 1800 thing right here. Because in 1892, she created what is now known as the ironing board. Shout out to the excellence that is Sarah Bone. We're gonna keep it moving on. <clears throat> Everybody should know this one. Thomas Carrington. Know what he did right no not that thomas carrington we need the because of course it went to dynasty of course it went to dynasty but the black excellence that is thomas carrington invented the stethoscope Yep, the thing that, what's going on? The thing that doctors use to listen to the strength of our hearts because we're human when we go to the doctor. 
the stethoscope was created by none other than John, I mean, Thomas Carrington. Did you guys know that? Shout out to the black excellence that is Thomas Carrington for inventing the stethoscope. And that was in 1876. And in 2023, still being used, you guys. Black excellence. Okay. Oh, I'm sure you guys appreciate what Thomas uh, Elkins did. Because you know what Thomas Elkins did? He invented a number of things. Um, And let's see if it comes up what I... Yeah, here is what we were doing it for. The chamber commode. <coughs> Which is basically the toilet, you guys. Not only did he do the, the refrigerator, but he also invented the actual chamber commode. That's the commode that you use inside a chamber instead of an outhouse. And it later was revolutionized into, well, this was the components that was inside this big old thing. See? So it's because of him that we can cop a squat in the doors inside the privacy of our own homes instead of an outhouse is because of the black excellence that is Thomas Elkins. Shout out to Thomas Elkins for creating the chamber commode. Okay? Which is also known as the toilet, you guys. Okay? Isn't that excellent? We're almost done, Curvies, with our excellent revolutionary, revolutionized lives that are black excellence. I mean, we could do this for days. We could literally do this for days. I'm not even halfway through my list, but I'm going to wrap it up here soon with like maybe four more things. Okay. Um, let's go with Walter Purvis. Excellent. Because we can do a couple of things. In one, because Walter Purvis actually invented the fountain pen. Walter Purvis also invented hand so the hand stamp, the fountain pen and hand stamp. I'm not sure what the hand stamp would have been used for, but let's look. So. He invented and patented improvements for the fountain pen in 1890, and he made it more durable and inexpensive and better to carry in your pocket. And what else did he do? They said he also made a hand stamp, huh? Let's look like at let's look at the hand stamp that he created. Interesting. So <clears throat> is this the same hand stamp that they use? Yeah, look, the hand stamp that we get at clubs. Remember back in the day before they started putting uh, bracelets on our wrists? Every time you go in a club, they would put the stamp on your hand with the UV light and you had to hold it under the thing to get back in. Thanks, William Purvis, for keeping the riffraff out, for inventing the hand stamp. Hello. Okay, so he did the hand stamp and the fountain pen. Now, we already talked about the door. We talked about the door knob. We talked about the door stop. But why don't we take a look at what Washington, Washington Martin did. Washington Martin. created the lock. So this fine look looking young man, Washington Martin, African American inventor, patented the lock in 1889. Okay. So 
And it looks like Winchester locks used to be the lock. Now they have a master lock. But Winchester's also a pow pow, right? So, but yes, he is the reason that things are kept safe with locks. We use locks today in 2023, y'all. <clears throat> Two more people we're going to go over. We have William Richardson. Thanks for hanging out with me today, Curvies, finding out all the excellence that is Black and the inventions and ingenuity that we currently use in 2023 that were invented by Black excellence so long ago. Our second to last is William T. Richardson, who in 1889 invented the baby buggy. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet, you guys? This man invented the baby buggy. Wait, I haven't been showing you guys stuff for how long? Oh, darn. You guys, I've been showing all the pictures. I'm sorry. Um, so the baby buggy is this guy, William Richardson. And then we had the lock, which was Martin, Washington Martin. Sorry, I was showing all this stuff back here. The hand stamp and the fountain pen by William Purvis. We already just went over. I'm sorry, I didn't show you guys all this stuff. Darn it, Curvies, let me know when I'm not showing you stuff, but it sounds like I am, okay? And then we have the chamber commode by Thomas Elkins and the refrigerator, right on. We have the stethoscope by none other than Thomas Carrington. Shout out to the black excellence that is Thomas Carrington. Sarah made us this here Iron and board, shout out to Sarah. These are all the things I think I didn't show you. The guitar, Robert Fleming Jr. Fine black man created the guitar for us. Shout out to black excellence. And then we have Philip Downing, who not only um, created the mailbox, they also used the mailbox design that he used as the ballot box back in the day, you guys. Um, so shout out to the excellence. That is Paul or Philip Dowling. That where there was a mix up on his name. I have Paul and everything else is saying Philip. Interesting. But he created the mailbox slash voter box that we get to use today. Then we have the door knob. Dorsey created that. I think you guys saw this one. And now we're going to get to the last one for today. And I thought it would be great because there are so many cooking shows on nowadays, you know. And Willie Johnson. Did you know that Willie Johnson created egg beater? Did you guys know that? The black man, Willie Johnson, created the egg beater that we still use in 2023. So the shouts continue to go out. I'm gonna go over this list one more time. I'm just gonna read it to you guys. We had the insect destroyer. We had the gas furnace, the elevator, the almanac, street sweeper, blood plasma bag, spark plug, lubricating plug, keychain, air conditioning unit, thermostat control, gas mask, traffic light, auto fishing device, golf tee, golf clothes dryer, peanut butter, auto cutoff switch, phone transmitters, lunch pails, shoe lasting machines, lawn sprinklers, pencil sharpeners, linen squeezers, record player arms, fire escape ladders, folding beds, straightening cones, tricycles, lanterns, the folding chair, the doorknobs, door stops, mailboxes, eye protectors, guitars, ironing boards, stethoscopes, chamber commodes, fire extinguishers, mops, hand soap, fountain pens, locks, baby buggies, and egg beaters, y'all. You guys! Can we get a shout out to all that is black excellence and the contributions 
and the reasons that we need to be remembered today as 100% human, 100% invested in the greatness of the globe and not just America. I'm sure that these inventors would have made this stuff in any country that they were in. They just happened to be in America at the time of the inventions. And I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to even sit with me through all this. Hey, shouts out to all my curvies. My soundboard just went down. But I wanna thank you guys for taking time to go out down this memory lane with me today. This has been a lot of fun. Like I said, we could do this again and I might do it again. This, we got three more days left in the month. And granted, it's the shortest month of the year, but we have we could fill it up 18 million times with the excellence that is black in America. So shout out to all my curvies for hanging out today. I hope you guys learned something new. I learned some stuff new with you too, even though I had my list. I, it's, I mean, most of the inventors that we went over today didn't only invent one thing. Um, so I continue. Yeah, yeah, let me drop this link. Let me drop the link. We have some time because I'm going to go live again. Look, I go from black history to white mess because we're going to be talking about uh, Vanderpump rules at three, I believe. So, um, but come on up. Anybody who would love to come up, I'd love to hear your POV some things that are black excellence. Um, I dropped the link. Thanks again. I hope you, if you're in the replay crew, you smash the buttons, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. If you haven't already hit the bell. Yes. Hello. Black excellence to white mess. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Hi, be my shorty. Hello, I am home doing laundry and dinner prep and yeah, everything. So I wanted to touch on um, about my godmother. Uh -huh. um, she's no longer here, but her, her parents are, uh, she's an olive colored African-American along with Italian American. Oh, wow. Um, so... Um, I've learned about the Safe Bus Company, of course, around Black History Month because she told me, um, oh, that's my dad. I'm like, your dad? Huh? She's like, yeah, when I was, uh, you know, adopted in the United States, you know, that was my family. Wow. And so I said, oh, wow. So um, Ralph Morgan and his brother, I believe it's Harry. Um, Harry was the CEO of Safe Bus Company. And this is my beautiful godmother. Gosh, look at black excellence, y'all. Hello. <laughs> and that's her husband. But they're wow. both they're both together in oh, heaven. Um, Meals portrait, not with yes. Meals. <laughs> yes. Yes. to Olin Mills. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so my godmother um, attended. Um, North Carolina State and my godfather was an Aggie A and T. Uh -huh. So um yeah, that's how they met from uh Mr. Morgan. That is such a beautiful story. Oh my gosh. So not only black excellence, but black love was in there too. Ooh. Absolutely. Go hand in hand, y'all. Don't be confused. We love it. we love just as great as we create. Absolutely. And keeping going. Right. <laughs> I love when you come up and share. That was so excellent. Like, and I would love to like um, discover more stuff about the Safe Bus Company too, because I know like it was really important for us to have our own all the way around. Now, did the company survive? Did it have the, like? Did the people come and try to blow it up ever? Well, no, not the bad part about blowing it up, but um, it was bought by the city in Winston Salem, and then they had a partnership with the state. Oh. of North Carolina. So Safe Bus Company did last until the 60s or 70s, I believe. Because oh, wow. I know the, the brothers had passed on and yeah. the children did not um, continue with the company or, you know, you know, establish further on with the company because, you know, the state had purchased it afterwards. But the, the source of the um, Safe Bus Company and the Jitneys um, it was about 35 buses, um, a few operators, 
Um, they did have a few female bus operators also. Wow. So um, it was for us to get back and forth to the, you know, work in the second, third shifts all the time at the plants or mm -hmm. other places that they had to go to work in. But, you know, Safe Bus Company was a godsend for those that lived in Winston-Salem and further along in North Carolina. That is awesome. You guys hear that? Black excellence was happening in North Carolina just to make sure that our brothers and sisters could get to and from the crappiest shift around. <laughs> yes, second and third dead shift. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. it was important because, you know, a lot of things used to happen back in the day. It wasn't safe for us to even be on the regular buses walking down the street. One, one day, I had a neighbor, bless her heart, rest in peace, June. Mm. Beautiful little lady. And she had a beautiful husband that left one day, took the bus to go get her something to eat. They never found the body. They never found him. They never nothing. Mm. And left see, that was the other thing. A lot of people did body. walk along with each other too, just mm -hmm. to make sure that they did reach out to the, you know, to work and forth, so yeah. forth and so on. Yeah. So it is very important because they, and still to this day, <laughs> they, that still happens. Yeah, you got to be careful if you can travel in twos to this day, travel in twos. Melanin is melanin is like 350 an ounce, y'all. So <laughs> I don't want to scare nobody. And more. <laughs> well, it, there, hey, that's what happens, especially to the um, albinos in Africa. Yes. It's just like they're sacred, just like the, you know, the ivory on the tusks of yeah. the, um, you know, the elephants. So. Mm -hmm. Crazy it's stuff. People day. are per a z. We gotta stay safe, y'all. Stay safe and stay informed. Be more. You got a channel yes. or anything? I know you be traveling and stuff. You got you got a blog or something? No, but I should start one. Um, the you only should. thing that's on my channel was some videos when I go to concerts. Yeah. Um, there were a few years back, but that's the only thing I have on my channel so far. Well, you want people to go over there? Go check out Be More Shorty. So when she sure. does. More content over on her channel that she'll have the subs already there you guys right you see some vintage you know music i know i have some drew hill and trey songs and i believe Ooh. a concert that i went to um this is trey songs before the allegations yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but um it was uh a few concerts or gatherings that i've been to and uploaded them so. Yeah, so check her out in these YouTube streets, you guys. Be my shorty. She is a curvy. So we do what curvies do, and we we know that there's enough to go around. So let's go over there and smash your buttons, y'all. I'm your definitely buttons. a curvy. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, because flat is boring. <laughs> hey, yeah. so I'm all pegs need love too. Yes, yes. <laughs> We all, well, just we all need the love. We all need the absolutely. love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So I always but like I, up here. Did you enjoy today? Did you learn anything? I did. You know, I did. I, I just learned a few others that I have not learned about, of course. Um, and it's always great to, you know, have further knowledge of things that we Definitely. use every day. Yes. Every Everything I went over on that list we use today everything isn't that amazing like it gives me goosebumps at how much we've created and it's still so relevant it's amazing you know what i mean and that just shows the power of a great mind and that we're unstoppable regardless of if we weren't re considered even during the time that most of the inventions that i just went over were mm -hmm. created a lot of them were prior to 1965 which is when black people technically became a citizen with the right to vote. Yeah. And so even as not being seen as a human, as not being seen as full citizen, we've made these contributions to the world and to this country. And I think it's just excellent that we can talk about it. And I think I might have a moving forward in 2023, just a black excellence hour every month. I'm going to incorporate that because I don't need just a month. I mean, we need to do this all the time. And remember black excellence from then and the current black excellence that's happening with the world changers and the movers today. Definitely. 
Yes. I mean, our minds are sponges. So, you know, we have to absorb more knowledge. And then we have future innovators also piggybacking on, you know, a lot of, of the current, you know, things that we do use. And they make it better. Yes. So yes. shout out to the IT students, the STEM students. You know, they are doing very good jobs, and, you know, but they have to be, you know, pushed further along instead of just call them nerds or, you know, shame them all the time. So we have right. to keep watering our babies. The seeds have to grow. Yes, yes. And um, coding is a big thing right now for us. Um, mm -hmm. Um, cause before Prince died, he was doing, you know, black girls code and he was all about mm -hmm. trying to get our community into coding, um, arena. And so I think that's really important too, but yeah, definitely my kids are stamps that's science, um, science, technology, engineering and mathematics or something like mm -hmm. that. And Prince so. did fund a couple of, um, STEM students here in Maryland. He, he did, did travel back and forth here. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh, I love yep. friends. Oh. Yes, have you now been to Paisley like, Park yet? Oh, yeah, the movie? No, 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 I said, have you visited Paisley Park yet? No, no, I haven't, have you? It's a tearjerker. I have not been, oh. but my aunt has been many times and she said it's a very, it's a, you have to have tissues when you go yeah, in because yeah. you do oh feel gosh. that presence of him once you go in. I should go with my fellow, um, me and my friend are obsessed. She's a fellow Capricorn and we are like, we could cry right now together about how much we miss Prince. We just love Prince. <laughs> hey baby, we're almost done. No problem. Yeah, um, my aunt has um, a verse of Purple Rain tattooed on her shoulder. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was a, that was the first worldly record I ever owned was a Prince record. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's, that's a staple, okay? Yes. If it's not Rufus or uh, anything Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, is definitely Prince. Right on. Right on. <laughs> Are you going to watch um, Love and Marriage DC tonight? Not sure. I'm on Baby Watch. My sister's in the hospital, so I'm not, I, I will catch up. Yes, my, my niece... Um, her name is Isis, and Isis means goddess. Yes. So my little baby goddess is on the way. Yeah. So I gotta keep an ear out. Auntie will run to the hospital. <laughs> the Isis Papers by Cress Wesling. That's something everybody should check out too. The Isis Papers. That's a great book. The Isis Papers. Yes. Cress Wesling. Love her. Love her. Um, but yeah, I don't really watch that show. I was just wondering because, you know, you're in Baltimore. So I didn't know if you were going to indulge. Yeah. Kelly, <laughs> Noah's in the house. What you Hey, Kelly. What's good, Kelly? Y'all, somebody got to design all the stuff they code. Human computer interaction, don't forget, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm reading Robin Crawford's book right now about Whitney Houston. Oh, it's very good. I hope it is. I don't. I want him to do her justice. Congratulations. Thank you, Justin. Baby please. on the way. Yes. Thank so you. Thank you. Does your sister already have? This is her and her husband's first baby. Oh my gosh! How sweet. Mm -hmm. And they will be celebrating uh, year five of their marriage in two and a half weeks. Oh my gosh! Congratulations. And on thank baby, you. Oh my gosh, I remember the day. I was a geriatric pregnancy for all my stuff, y'all. I was 39 the first time I had a baby and 44 the second. So how old is your my sister? My mom, my sister just turned 32 this year. Oh, so she's not geriatric, only after 34. No. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> my mom had me at 39 two months before her 40th birthday. So I was, the, I was deemed the oops baby. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I were on purpose. Uh, mine were all on purpose, but... Uh, yeah, but I was like, oh, God, it's funny because I didn't think I could get pregnant. And we had an appointment at a black fertility mm. special. The same okay. day, my test came back positive. Yeah. Mm. Same day. We, we were like, is it you? Is it me? 
And uh, so we made the appointment with the fertility specialist after getting like checked for fibroids and he had his sperm count checked and there was mm -hmm. nothing wrong. We just didn't get pregnant until after we got married. My ovaries had that song in their head. First comes love. Mm, come marriage, then come love with the baby carriage. <laughs> yes. Because we made it for like 10 years before I actually got pregnant. Wow. That's amazing. And then we got pregnant on our honeymoon night. It was crazy. It was crazy. So, but God is mm. great. Yes. So happy. Thank for you, them. Ebony. Yes. Thank my you. Nephew. Oh my goodness. Do you have any kids, B more? <laughs> Everybody else's kids are my kids. Oh, I'm yeah, just the right. auntie. Yeah, the best auntie in the world was my was what I felt my life's mission was about to have to be till I had mine. Yes, I love being an auntie. My I love it too. I give them right back. So it happens. Yes. <laughs> that, oh, awesome. Yes. Yes. No worries. Thank no you. Love. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> Thanks for coming up and sharing that. Thank you so no much. No problem. Let I us will know jump as in. As, you, as soon as you know. Are you on Instagram? Absolutely. I am. It's the same name, Be More Shawty. Yeah. It's all together. Yeah. Hit me on Instagram. DM me. I would love to celebrate when you celebrate. I do follow you, I believe, but I don't think you follow me. Nadi That's follows okay. me and Corey not, follows me. That's not okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll sure I take care but of that yeah, my, my name is the same here. Be more shorty is just all one. Isn't she gorgeous? Thank you, Ebony. Gorgeous. Thank yes. You, thank you. Yes, Auntie Life over here too. Yeah, Kelly <laughs> Nolan. Absolutely. Yes. That A L. Got all about that A L. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I was just washing the baby's clothes that stays here. So, and then yeah. I'm doing my laundry, and then I'm my dad's caretaker. So, just this is this is Saturday's get up today. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it, and I love you. Thanks for coming up and sharing. Thank that. you, love you too. And I look forward to you coming back. She's official part of the Kirby crew. You guys make sure and get her. Um, go make her have some subs to make her want to channel you guys. <laughs> I am thinking about it. Yeah. So it's like my travel blogs and vlogs. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. We look forward to it, Be more. So All right. um Curvies. I'm about to wrap it up. Like I said, I think I'm supposed to go live in a half hour for the white mess that is Vanderpump rules. Because they don't have any black people on there. That's why I can say that. We're not even no. that. they don't have <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I'm even indulging because I usually at least have to have one, but it's a guilty pleasure watching all the white people behave badly. And <laughs> hey, they do reckless stuff too. They do so much treachery over there. We're going to get into it. Um, <laughs> yes, it's a chill day. It's literally a chilly and snow out. I ordered food earlier today and had some hot tea. Oh, I know. I need to go have me and my Rubella Lions make tea. Um, yes, white mess. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm not even being separatist. <laughs> I was just assigning it as something. I'm sorry if I hurt anybody's feelings. I love everybody. I love everybody. <laughs> okay. So thank you guys for tuning in. Smash the buttons on your way out. Smash the buttons in the replay crew. Hit that bell so you can get notified next time your girl Larger Curves uploads a video so you can become part of this beautiful curvy community that we're growing over here now that we're to 1K. 1K curvies. That's right. Okay. Hey, you guys, I'll see you later and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Peace.